All right, uh, th this will cover a little bit more uh, in that sector. Like I said, I can't emphasize enough, we teach it as a gap scheme concept to build our double teams, duo double up, power no puller. Uh, priority gap is filled. The base block of duo for us is a down block via the, with a V of the neck landmark. So if you look to your priority gap, which we'll talk about here in a second, you look to your priority gap and there is a defender in that gap, we are thinking down block via the neck landmark. If our priority gap's open and I look to my priority gap and no one is there, I'm looking to build the double team. If the guy's out of range, okay, say we're at tackle and that guy's in a nine, then we'll simply work through the gap to the linebacker. But is he, if he's in that seven alignment where we can put a shoulder on him, we want to look to build that double team. Center, alert to build a peg double team. Okay, I put this in here, and uh, this is a backside gap scheme double team. A lot of people don't have this in their repertoire because everybody has their ace-deuce tray on the front side. A lot of people don't have that gap scheme style double team between the backside guard and center because typically in all of your gap schemes, the backside guard's pulling. So that was something new for us within our system we had to kind of create uh, was, like I said, that center and backside guard in the gap scheme double team. Backside, I can't emphasize this enough. You're going to get a lot of games and zone busters on the backside of duo, okay? You've got to be patient on the backside. In the NFL, a lot of times you'll see guys pass setting the backside of this, okay? Maintaining inside, front side number control, call side number control uh, on the defender. Uh, but you'll see those guys be super patient because this play allows them to know where the back set is and where to expect games at. Um, so we want to always maintain call side leverage on the defender. So if it's right duo, we want to be on the right side half of that defender. Can't emphasize this enough. It's an attitude play. This is a play that's going to hit four yards, four yards, six yards, 60. Okay. You got to believe in this play. You can believe in this play as a short yardage play, as an add to your bunch package. But overall, it has got to be an attitude play for your guys where I think the attitude changes it is teaching it as a true gap scheme concept and being able to utilize those deuce blocks, those ace blocks, uh, the peg blocks in our uh, thought process, but being able to utilize those as a nasty double team to really dent the defense and be vertical uh, in our delivery to the linebacker. So now here's our uh, actual playbook um, snippet. Uh, you guys, I, I, I say I put this on here for guys that like to read the textbooks. Uh, th this is on there. I like to teach my guys conceptually so they kind of know this, but there are guys in my room uh, that kind of live off this. This is our calls, everything you need. You'll see over here to the right, uh, you know, it's got a gallop thought process in there. I think you got to cater to your kids. If they can gallop to get in, uh, get in gap scheme double teams, then you can teach them to gallop. If they can't, you got to teach them to position attack. Let's do what fits their skill set best. A lot of really good players can gallop and still create power getting into gap scheme double teams. A lot of lesser athletes cannot create power out of the gallop technique. And uh, that, that's a, also a, you know, a big question in gap scheme double teams is how are you teaching that outside guy to get into it? I think it depends on the guy's skill set and what he's comfortable with. Um, you know, being working at the Division II level, all the way up to being at the University of Georgia with two, you know, first round offensive tackles. There, there's a wide range of skill sets there. Uh, ourselves as, as offensive line coaches have to kind of cater um, to what those, uh, what our players can do uh, and, and not really focus on what they can't do, but what they can do and what they're best at and what puts them in an extremely successful situation out there. That is our job. Uh, so you'll see some techniques utilized in this call right here uh, or, or in this playbook sheet uh, that, that may differ a little bit from what you see on tape. Um, one thing we can also talk about here, the back's position and footwork and aiming point. Uh, the back, like I said, is going to be in a pistol alignment normally here or in an ugly alignment, which in an ugly alignment, he is aligned to the same side as the call. So if it's right duo, he would be aligned to the tight end on the right. All right. Obviously, he would take just a shuffle step and get to the inside leg of the guard. That's our aiming point. If he was in pistol, we would slide and drive 
seating the ball in the A-gap there, aiming for the inside leg of the guard as an initial aiming point. Okay, it's not his read key. As we talked about earlier, his read key is going to be the first linebacker in the box. Uh, so he's going to slide and drive. That'll be his footwork. We'll see that as we go along.